So, Bobak, tell us a little bit about yourself. <clears throat> well, I've always been a fan of shoes since I was younger. I just never had them when I was a kid, and I was the type to wear hand-me-downs and whatever people pass along to me. And even when I was younger, I even wore fake shoes here and there because I didn't care. I didn't have the money to afford to buy the real thing. And as I got older, I steadily collected Michael Jordan basketball cards. So I was always a fan of Michael Jordan because I got to watch him as I was growing up. And I didn't really get heavily into shoes until 2012 where I started buying a lot of shoes for myself because I was working at fine dining restaurants and I just had cash on hand always. And uh, it started out small. I started out by going and getting stuff that was being released in the stores every Saturday. And then I started looking for collections. So I started checking Craigslist and eBay and trying to find deals. And Craigslist kind of got shady. So I started sending people emails on eBay. Um just sounding as professional as possible and trying to negotiate prices. And I prefer to see the shoes in person because you don't always get what people say they're giving you. So I found a guy with 50 pairs of Jordans that he was selling in my size, which is 12, maybe about 30 minutes outside of Chicago and northern Indiana. So I drove up there with cash and, um, basically negotiated a new price because he had some shoes in there that I'm pretty sure were fake. And I was supposed to get 50 from him at the time, and we ended up renegotiating for 44 pairs, and I got them around $185 a piece. And it was a lot of the classics, like the Concords and Space Jams and Cool Grays. And I ended up selling half of the collection because he had so many doubles and triples. And I actually made my money back just by selling half of the collection. So with the money that I got back, I started looking for other collections. And shortly I started attending sneaker conventions to try to find shoes for myself, because I really started to sell shoes just to beef up my own collection. And as I was, a vendor at these conventions, like locally, we would only go to like Nashville and Cincinnati and Indianapolis, which may be within a two or three hour radius of Louisville. Um, people would always ask me why I only had size 12 shoes because they wanted other sizes. So I started getting rid of my size 12s that I had a lot of the doubles and triple dubs, and I started trading for and purchasing other collections at different sizes. And that's where it just started to grow. I had a business partner at first, my first two years of selling shoes, but that ended within two years, and I started my own company, the 23 Zone, in 2014. And I just kept selling out of the house and going to conventions and whatnot. And eventually, after like, two more years of starting the 23 zone. I opened a storefront down by the University of Louisville's campus, which is just a few blocks away from Churchill Downs as well. So it's a real centralized location <laughs> to where uh, a lot of the athletes from the school would come and a lot of people. It's uh, just easier to get to than on the far ends of town, which could be a 20 or 30 minute commute, which is doesn't sound like a lot, but the people in a small city it is right yeah so for the uh listeners who don't really know you know much about what's going on what would you if you had to describe it what would you say the 23 zone is well we buy sell and trade new and lightly worn shoes and we do a consignment as well at a 90 10 split and uh I've got one of the Keymaster machines in there where you can win shoes out of the machine. And up to oh, date, we have cool. about 68 winners. Wow. 
I've had two guys win six times a piece. They're kind of running a competition within one another. And uh, I've had several people hit two, three times. Wow. And I always post all my winners on Instagram, kind of like a wall of fame kind of thing. And I always give them the option if they win something that's not their size, they can trade it for something that is of similar value. And I'm trying to be pretty fair when it comes to fair market value. Like, I don't like ripping people off. Right. Getting over on anybody. So, because I don't advertise or anything. It's all word of mouth. Um, Oh, okay. And then your Instagram as well, right? Yeah, Instagram, Facebook. I try to utilize the mm. free social media apps because advertising can get kind of pricey and it doesn't always guarantee that you have sales. You might have more views, but I always like to direct marketing aspects. Right. So, uh, you know, I I know you kind of mentioned, you know, where, where you're located already. You're kind of near the uh, Louisville campus. Um, we yes. were just wondering, do you do this full time now? Yeah, actually, I'm there every day except for Sundays and Mondays. I tend to use Mondays to run errands and Sundays to hang out with family. But Tuesdays through Fridays, I'm there 11 to 7, and Saturdays 12 to 6. And I just see to it that I'm always there. And is it just is it just with, you now? Is, are you just running yeah. a solo? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after the bad partnership i just didn't want to take that route again and i mean i've had people offer to buy in but at this point i've pretty much been doing everything myself except for when i was going to the conventions i had friends that would you know take time out of their day to come help and sometimes it would be the whole day and without them i wouldn't have been able to manage two or three hundred pairs unloading and reloading the trucks and setting up the tables and everything but at the shop it's usually just me like friends come by throughout the day but Mm. it's not like such an onslaught of customers that i can't handle it sometimes on the weekends it might get busy but uh i mean it's a pretty unique location it's not like too big or anything right and we've got a lot of shoes in there maybe like seven or eight hundred pairs on the wall and sizes 60 through 15 uh, haven't really seen very many shoes bigger than a 15 mm-hmm. and yeah. we don't have too many seven footers running around in Louisville. <laughs> yeah. so uh so but, what uh, did, why did you make your own consultancy well uh at the time i always i don't know once i started getting into shoes i just had a goal in mind to open a store because I wasn't really big into the online selling like I tried eBay for a little bit but Mm -hmm. the fees and stuff were too high and I was trying to sell my shoes at a decent price and I didn't want to sell them at the highest PP because I didn't want to sit on inventory but (laughs) I just prefer the face-to-face communication and interaction with people as opposed to only using online sales it's just you get to build relationships with people and talk shoes and share similar interests and passions and you meet a lot of cool people along the way and uh Mm -hmm. you know i like that it's uh, a lot less stressful than like working in a restaurant and always being on your feet oh yeah so and i really love shoes like it's just awesome to be around it all day just talk shoes all day right yeah, yeah, that's what we're hoping for. Um, but actually, you know, think going back, what were you, some of the challenges? You know, starting out your own store. <clears throat> well, um, I guess I really didn't think about what it took to open a store. I was just trying to learn as much as I could on the fly to get it open. I was always in good standing with the state as far as taxes and annual reports and all that stuff goes, but I never really thought about what it would really take to have the capital to open a store and get shelving and make the store look, you know, good. I had to paint options and floor options and shelving options and what do I want to do for the counter? Like I didn't think about that 
stuff until it was time to actually do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, luckily, a lot of people pitched in and helped out. I had a couple carpenter buddies that came and put my shelves up and helped me paint and put trim up and get the store looking nice, put some curtains up for me, put some security doors up for me. Um, I had people donate countertops and glass shelving and I had uh, just a lot of people reached out. You know, I don't really like to ask a lot of people for help, but it was nice that the people did help because it was almost overwhelming because you have to put a lot of thought and planning into it. And I just knew that once I got it open that I could sell the shoes and uh, it would pay for itself, which it has been. Wow. So did you ever have a moment of doubt where, you know, starting it out, like what, because I know you said that you were kind of overwhelmed, but did you ever have a moment where like, you know, why did I do this? At times, yeah, like when it's slow, um, it just sucks when it's slow, but I guess that's just retail in general. I never really had a job at the mall or anything to where I can see what it's like, uh, but I would always think to to how restaurants were, and there were slow times for the restaurants as well, and mm-hmm. it kind of carries over to retail in general. But the good months balance out the bad months. Um, and I've had a few years under my belt now to where I can look at numbers and compare from previous years and months and see, you know, when I can expect a slow time. And when it gets slow, you just have to adapt and try to find different ways to get people in the doors. You can't always worry about if it's going to be busy or not because people always come. You know, people might not always spend, but people always come, that's for sure. Definitely, definitely. So uh, with the store being uh, what it is, what would you say one of your best achievements, you know, that you're most proud of since you've started doing this here? <clears throat> Actually being able to sustain the business and stay in good standing with the state and, you know, learn what it takes to keep a business operating and how to keep yourself out of the red, how yeah. to operate it's bank accounts good, and, yeah. you know, People you got to stay on your toes. Too, yeah. yeah, I mean, taxes, like I don't even get a heads up. Sometimes I just get penalized for stuff that I had no idea about, and that's one way of learning, but, <laughs> learning the hard you way. know, yeah. yeah, I mean, stuff that I never read about in school or anything, like tangible property taxes like stuff you already have paid taxes on Mm -hmm. and when you sell it you pay taxes but if you also keep inventory on hand you have to pay taxes on that as well that's just kind of a rip off but it is what it is you know i don't want to keep getting penalized right Mm -hmm. i want to keep my credit in check i don't want any debt owed so Get all that stuff handled. Yeah, we definitely understand that. Um, so, you know, you kind of mentioned that you have a couple hundred pairs of shoes in uh, inventory at all times. What what would you say what percentage is consigned to you or, you know, that you fully just bought out? Um, I don't know. I'd say, like, at this point, about 10% is consignment. A lot of people prefer to sell, but... I turned down a lot of stuff if it's not lightly worn at this point. Like when I first opened, I was taking whatever. Um, even if it was real dirty, I would just sell it real cheap because there's all types of people out there that, you know, have preferences as far as like the amount of wear on a shoe. Um, mm-hmm. But now I always think about if I can sell it online or not and if it's something that too creased or the soles are too saturated then i'll just pass on yeah so you know it sounds like you you know you buy a lot of shoes so in regards to that what's the process of you know someone walking in and you saying that they want to sell you a shoe and then as well you know have you had any like tough moments where people are just straight lowballing you or they're asking for too much 
Yeah, I mean, that happens. Uh, I learned to not make the first offer. I always let people tell me what they want out of the shoe, and then I'll explain to them how much the shoe is going for on, like, Doge or Stock X, since everybody wants to use those as price points. And it's something that I have to adapt and compete with. And I always try to match those prices or sell under. Um, and I just don't want to offer too much. Like sometimes people don't want very much for their shoes. They're just in the bind. And other times, like if somebody wants too much, I'll just point them to these apps and tell them to sell it there because I can't really pay top dollar on a shoe and then sell it for more than what it's going for. So right. I used to get frustrated with it, but... I've learned to be patient with people because not everybody knows the value of the shoes. Some people are just restricted to the city limits and haven't been to a big city like LA or New York and have seen these types of boutiques and aren't even familiar with the apps on the phones and you know what some of these shoes are worth. Yeah. So I try to explain it to them and if they're not paying attention then you know, about my day i just don't let it bother me as much as it used to yeah i mean at a certain point you just have to kind of move past it we definitely i mean you're going to deal with people dude i mean obviously they shouldn't know as much as you because you know they're walking into your store so i mean i guess you kind of have to expect a little bit of that baggage at some point but uh something that we ask all of our sneaker heads and like store owners store owners this question but like what is your all-time favorite shoe and do you personally own it right now or is it something that you're still working through well, uh, my all-time favorite shoe is probably the Black Cement 3. It would be the White Cement 3 if it didn't get all dingy and yellow. Mm -hmm. um, but the Black Cement 3, like, I just love that shoe. It was the Black Metallic 5 when I was a kid because that was, like, the first Jordan that I fell in love with. But as I grew older, like, the 3s are so comfortable, and I love that cement print it's just the elephant print it looks awesome mm -hmm. uh it's just a classic shoe it just never gets old i probably have like five or six pairs of them throughout the years like the 08 cdp pack and i've got the ones that came out around the time the concords came out and then the newer ones of course with the nike on the heel tab must have so now uh, at this point we're just uh pretty much wrapping it up now so the floor is yours if you want to shout out or plug anything or if you have anything you want to talk about. As I check this list. Well, uh, I definitely appreciate you guys for having me. Um, anytime I'm in town, I usually refer people that are in the shoes to the other shops in town because we always show love to each other and, you know, that's a part of being in the community and not trying to be more of an individual um, because it takes a lot more than just one business to keep things rolling. Right. And, uh, you know, there's other people that have other stuff and other sizes, and that's how you just keep things rolling. Like, I don't think any of us really advertise. We just use fair business practices and try to have repeat business to keep things rolling. So a lot of us in the city mess with each other, and I think that's dope. And uh, you know, hopefully that continues, and we just continue to grow, and you never know where the culture will take us. Definitely. All right. Um, I think that's going to be it for us. Um, thank you so much, Bobak, for uh, coming on. We really appreciate you for sure. uh, coming on. And uh, we'll probably get everything wrapped up and have it out next few weeks probably on sundays that's awesome man i appreciate you guys for having me it was awesome no, no problem, problem. Yeah, thanks for guys. coming on thanks for coming on good luck uh keep on grinding it sounds like you're doing great so uh hope nothing but the best for you coming up thanks man i appreciate you guys all right awesome. take care take it easy. all right have a good one you too